Okay, so we are live recording, so I'll just get started. There are still a couple of guys whose mics are not turned on. Daniel, Lillian, Terry, Oppo A3S. If you know them, reach out to them, let them know, because actually there are more. I mean, they're quite a number. So yeah, if you can see anyone on the call whose mic is not just... Let them know. I'm not going to pay attention to that right now. I just want us to roll in and get, get on with it. So, yeah, so today we are talking about risk management and uh, basically how to never blow your Forex account. So let me give you guys an idea of my journey in trading. And um, like you, you, all, you guys all know by now, I talk about it all the time in my presentations. I started trading uh, Forex uh, or rather learning in in 16 months ago it's now six i think 15 or 16 months ago and it, in my journey i remember when i started and maybe newbies can uh, relate to this when i started all i was doing was i was taking signals i remember my first two weeks or is it three weeks i was able to grow an account of 50 dollars to 221 dollars purely taking signals and obviously you guys know why i was you know uh, really seriously taking signals because i needed money and i was like hey <laughs> i'm going to you know take as many signals and i was lucky i was lucky i must say i was lucky it was good but the interesting thing is the next week i blew the account so that was the beginning of my journey of blowing accounts why um i didn't understand risk management Okay, and it took me a long, long time before I began to take risk management seriously. You know, the way we, we all have, we, we hear our educators teaching us and telling us risk one to 3%, you know, don't risk too much money you can't lose. And it's all theory um, until now you have to put it into practice and then you're in the market and you're excited and all you want to do is to multiply your $100 account to $500 in record time. And I ended up blowing six accounts, six or seven accounts. Like I would blow an account, I would top up again. I put another hundred dollars, I blow it, I put it back again. And for about three to four months, I think when I stopped blowing accounts really was in um, so November, January, February, in I believe May. Um, and in May is when I started my fierce channel. Um, so I've been, that's when I started sharing trades with the community, like with everyone in Kenya and whatnot. Um, and because at that time, I think I was beginning to become a bit more confident as a trader and I wanted to, you know, but I was still, you know, starting out struggling ETC in terms of just being consistently profitable. So by the time I say I blew six accounts, six or seven accounts, Please note that I cannot remember after six because I blew a couple more and I just stopped counting because I was like, if I count, I'm going to quit this industry. So I don't know the older people uh, on, the, on the call who are like more than six months or three months. I don't know if you've had that experience, but I can tell you it's not a good experience. And then I just had a conversation with myself and I said, you know what? I need to start listening. And for me, the breakthrough surprise surprise was in September when we went to Dallas. Um, and I listened to a gentleman called Chris Derrick, and then there was all Christopher Derrick, and then there was also what's his name, uh, Stevenson Lindor. Many of me, some of you maybe have heard of these uh, educators. They're really, really good. But they talked about like I remember Chris uh, Stevenson Lindor was talking about the way he blew about I can't remember how many fifteen million, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He blew it in a day. A trade went badly. He didn't have stop loss. And when he came back from wherever, I think they had gone shopping with his girlfriend at Gucci or something, and they shopped and shopped. When he came back home, he found the account was blown. And what happened next was they went back to the shops where they had bought stuff and returned everything. Okay? So, you know, you hear such stories and you're like, even good traders, with huge capital who have been trading for years or for months also i blow accounts that's one thing i need you guys to understand from the get-go so if we don't learn how to rein in our trading 
and begin to create a discipline, it's going to continue and continue. You'll make money, and then three months in, you'll blow it, and then it becomes a cycle. And I know all of us on this call can relate with that. We've had that experience. So I'm hoping that by the end of this uh, presentation, which I'm trying, I'll try and not talk too much because I can also talk, um, will be at least somewhere. So today our focus is on three things, risk management tips, um, lots, which is basically has to do with the stop loss, I mean, um, calculating profits in a safe way, and then hedging. Um, I was going to talk about the PIP calculator thing in terms of calculating PIPs specifically per currency, but I think if I focus on that we, uh, today, it will take too long, um, and I don't want to make this session too long, there's a shortcut to that. You can just go to, um, for currency pairs to calculate the PIP value. You can go to, and I hope you're taking notes, you can go to babypips.com stroke calculator, if I'm not wrong, but there's a link I've posted at the end of this presentation. Um, and then there's also another website for, I think other, I can't remember, but Baby Pips has a calculator. And there are other calculators online that you can calculate the different uh, values of Pips. Um, so that's that. Okay. so. Bernard is trying to get into the call. Someone uh, kindly um, give him the password. I, I'm not sure why he can't log in. Um, someone just reach out to him and give him the password. So that's it. So, um, so that's that. And then, so risk management, lots and hedging, right? Okay, so when you talk about risk management, yeah, um, there are different types of risks uh, or types of forex, forex risk. And, these are things we already know, but I'm just defining them for the new, new, newer people. Maybe you just joined the other day, um, you know, and of course you're still going through the academy. So of course we have the market risk. Market risk is basically, um, you know, we, you, the way you can go into the market and you predict that the, the movement of the market will go a certain way, but then it doesn't go that way and it goes the opposite way. So that's, that's, a, that's a risk that is in the market. And all of us as traders, we experience this kind of risk almost every other day, if not every day, yeah? Um, and then we also have liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is, um, let give you an example, some uh, different currencies have different liquidities, okay? Meaning that liquidity in this sense, availability in layman terms, uh, in terms of availability in the market, or maybe they are easy to, um, they have more volume, they have more supply and demand, Supply meaning there are many sellers and demand meaning there are many buyers. So there are some currency pairs which are very, very heavily traded and we, we've experienced some of these currencies. The GBP pairs, for example, um, the Euro USD pairs, you know, they, 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 they literally have movement. Um, which, are the, which are the pairs? The gold pairs, um, of course, the indices. Indices are not currencies, so we're not really talking about indices today. And then, of course, we have the, the, the illiquid currencies. For example, those of the exotic pairs, exotic pairs being um, uh, Euro MXN, let's say USD ZAR, USD NOC, USD TRI, you know, they are not so heavily traded. Yes, they move, but they are not so heavily traded. So you find that sometimes if you are a Forex trader in the live market, for, for us, we are really retail traders, but if you are a um, it's called a commercial trader or an institutional trader. Some of those pairs you'd really need to, it would be hard for you to trade them if you don't have a lot of money, okay? So that's the, that's the type of risk, risk that's there. So you, you also want to trade pairs that have high liquidity, which you, most of us already at this juncture, we already know which pairs these are. And you can always Google online and see what are the currency pairs that are heavily traded or have high liquidity. Then there's leverage risk, uh, meaning that, you know, sometimes you can um, give you an example. Brokers give us leverage when we are trading, right? So when we set up an account, you, you know, you can choose your leverage, one to 200, one to 300, one to 500, some give one to 1,000. Now, if you're a newbie trader, I always encourage people start with a lower uh, leverage of like one to, let's say, 300, one to uh, 200. I know in the beginning it's it's tempting to say you want one to 500, one to 600. Um, from experience, because I used to have an account which I used to trade with one to 500, 
it's a bit more riskier because the broker is giving you more money yeah so you find that when you're in a drawdown your uh, in as much as you have a big margin your losses end up being even bigger i don't know if you guys have ever noticed that i don't know if any of the older traders have ever ever noticed that and then there are some brokers maybe not the retail uh, brokers all retail brokers but there are some brokers who when you're in when you when they give you more money sometimes when you lose money in the market you can even end up in negative as your balance i don't know if anyone has ever experienced a negative balance you know you've traded you've made a loss but now you're in negative sometimes it's also because of the kind of leverage you are given by the broker so now you're eating into their money as well so you go into negative and then of course the interest rates risk this is basically you know interest rates when they go up or down they affect currencies so for example again at a very layman level if you enter the if you load your account with a hundred dollars it kenya shillings wise it's about ten thousand shillings but now something happens in the market like what's been happening with corona and maybe the value of the dollar is losing value so yes you may still make um a hundred dollars profit but when you come to withdraw, it's less than what you actually invested. So those are the kinds of risks that, you know, Forex traders, we literally um, experience. James experienced minus $40 balance after blowing. Exactly. So thank God there's someone who has that <laughs> practical experience. So that's the thing. And, and hence why I, I highly recommend from experience, especially when you become more proficient. In the beginning, you can use a bigger lot because if you have a hundred i mean leverage you have if you have a hundred dollars you want more room to trade so that you can grow it and the thing is you can always talk to your broker and tell them later on when your account has grown you can tell them please reduce my leverage because it's very tempting when you have um let's say uh, an account of two hundred dollars and then you've been given leverage of a thousand that means two hundred times a thousand so your margin is you know, 200,000 or something like that, or 20,000. And that's huge for a small account. So you can imagine the day you have a loss, then it's really crazy. Um, so good to note those things. And then uh, moving on. So basically, I, I just want to go through the, the very quickly, the 10 types of risk, um, risk management. Wait, hold on. Yeah, the 10 Forex, Forex risk management tips. And I'll go through them very quickly. I'm trying to move my, so I'll just go through them very quickly. So the first five are, you know, educate yourself about forest, forex risk and trading. Of course, we are lucky because we're in IM Academy. So we get to hear about, uh, we get to be taught by our educators on uh, some of these things. The Academy has a, a video on risk management. I think it's FRX 445 that has been done by Chris Terry. I don't know if you guys have watched that. Someone is saying my volume keeps on disappearing. Is that correct? Can we all, can you all hear me? I had apologized earlier and said my internet has been a bit weird, so kindly bear with me. I hope you can hear me though. So, okay, so yes, educate yourself about forex risk and trading, control your risk with a stop loss. So those are some of the tips um which i'll focus on up in terms of stop loss and then don't risk more than you can afford to lose again these are things that we already know guys but i'm just going through them because i know sometimes we will end up we we are tempted we are human we are tempted to risk more than we can afford to lose okay but these are some of the tips to keep you in the game and then i've already talked about leverage so limit your use of leverage don't take the big leverage try not to and then have a realistic have realistic profit expectations like for example i sometimes i have conversations with people and they're like you know how how long will it take me to grow an a, an account of a hundred dollars to like five hundred dollars it depends okay um not everyone will be able to double their account in a week not everyone will be able to do it in a month a conservative uh, the, uh, a conservative way of growing your account is, you know, like what we are doing on the 52 week challenge. We are saying we want to grow our accounts by 15% a week. That's really realistic because $100 to $115 in five trading days or three trading days is realistic. But now, if you say $100 to $300, that's a bit, especially in the beginning, that will mean that you're pulling some major strings and or something. But I know there are some people here who have perfected the art of compounding. I know Bernice 
is very good at that. She's been showing, she's been giving us her experience since we said the 52 week challenge. So it's possible. But the tip, these are just tips that you can keep in mind, especially for the new members, the new traders. And then use take profit. I've noticed some people don't use take profit. They're like higher. The trade has, you know, they're waiting for the trade to keep on moving and moving and moving and moving. It doesn't make sense because if it reverses by accident, you're done, right? Um, then have a Forex trading plan. This is something I really, really recommend. Thankfully for all of us on the 52 uh, calendar, we have a Forex trading plan. And the, our plan is based off the 52 weeks compounding sheet. So um, that's one. So as long as you're using that, then you have a rough idea of how you're trading. Something else I usually recommend is a trading journal. So part of your trading plan is having a trading journal whereby every single, and it might be, it might be tedious, but it's recommended because I can tell you for, my, for me, since I started trading, um, especially when I started sharing trades with everyone in the community, since May last year, I have every single trade written down. So I can literally tell you how many trades have, have been profitable, how many have made losses. I can analyze my trades and say which pairs I don't like, which ones I like, which ones I'm good at, which ones I'm not. And that's why if you see my trading, I tend to trade certain pairs like AUD, JPY, AD, USD, because um, I like them. They're also very volatile. I mean, sometimes they act like they're not, but they're really some of the volatile pairs. So my volume keeps disappearing. Again, it's internet, bear with me. And then manage your risk uh, by managing your emotions. This is a big one, okay? Guys, if you're not able to manage your emotions in trading, if you cannot take away, you cannot uh, stop being attached to your trade. I know we are trading real money. Some of us have maybe even borrowed this money or some of us have taken you know, some of our salaries and put into the account to trade or our savings. And we, are, you know, it's, we, we want it to grow. But as long as we have emotion attached to the, to the trading, our trading will be emotional. So that's how we end up making mistakes. Um, like I said uh, in, a, in our previous call the other day, you know, jumping out of a trade um, too early or staying in a trade too long because you know, you're know you like, you're seeing your account is just going red, 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 and you don't want to get out. Um, then of course, diversify your Forex portfolio, meaning that instead of just trading sometimes one pair, try and trade different pairs because sometimes some pairs at a specific period in time, maybe there's a lot of uncertainty, like what's been happening now, uh, last week, especially with gold. You know, I for me, um, gold was very, crazy last week so if you're you're only used to trading gold that means you can't trade another pair so you di diversify your, your forex portfolio you try and trade um trade uh, pairs that move slowly as well as pairs that move really fast because then if at all you're in um if one pair is moving too faster at least you're making some money but at the same time you have a pair that even if it's moving slowly um it's much more safer than the ones that move pretty fast. I'm sure you guys have experienced that already. Um, so in, in a nutshell, um, trading without stop loss is like driving a car without brakes at top speed. And you've noticed I'm just focusing on this stop loss thing. I know we talk about it a lot when we are trading, but I know some of us still don't use stop loss. But if you don't use a, a physical stop loss, again, use a mental one. Know when to get in and when to get out. <laughs> Okay, so technically, um, these are okay. So, we, when you're talking about profit or, and loss, yeah, there are th key things that we need to ask yourselves what kind of a trader are you? So, you could be a scalper, okay. So, my internet, okay, you could be a scalper, you could be an intraday trader, you could be a swing trader. You need to know what kind of trader you are. Now, we have different educators, we have Dr. K, we have the bass. We have, uh, uh, who else? Kinali Allen, Kimberly Torres, all those people. You have, let's say myself, maybe, you know, we used to follow Mr. GJ for those who still follow him. All of those traders are different. They all trade different strategies. Some are short-term scalpers, short-term traders, others are long-term traders. Um, so if you're following all these traders, it doesn't matter what they, how they're trading, 
you need to know yourself what kind of a trader you are. I get a lot of people coming to me like over the last one year, there are people who have been in this business for quite a bit of time. And um, I, I'm seeing Shiro on the call. Um, maybe even, you know, I can use that as an example. Shiro, Bernard, you were there when, um, from the beginning when we were learning from Dr. K. And I remember when I first started learning about, uh, from Dr. K, we were learning about the clouds. You know, red line crossing above, blue line, and so on and so forth. And we were trading with her. And then Mr. GJ came along. He was also still trading with the cloud. Uh, but, you know, trading consolidation for those people who used to wake up for his calls, used to trade consolidation uh, and trade impulse, his impulse strategy. In fact, those videos are still on YouTube. And then he brought in a third strategy, cloud breakout. Now, if you think about it, all those strategies work or worked, you know, and people made money at some point. However, funny enough, there are still some traders today who have been there since the beginning who still don't know what kind of a trader they are. Because unfortunately, when you mix all these strategies, you never really identify one to work with. So what I want to encourage you guys today, part of risk management is sitting down with yourself and telling yourself, if I'm following Dr. K, can I just follow Dr. K? Because if, if you had followed Mr. GJ, Mr. GJ, I mean, I know his strategy at the, from the top of my head, and I can get in and use his strategy, it works. But for some reason, you know, people are still, you know, going through this whole cycle of changing traders. Now we are all on bus, you know, Kenyans, we love bus, he's a, he's a new thing. But then you find sometimes a trade will go bad like it did, I think, was it on Monday or when, and I had people talking about it, or even me, you want to learn from me how I trade. And then my trade doesn't go well, you know, and then you're like, wow, you know, this isn't working. So first identify what kind of trader you are. And then when you identify what kind of trader you are, write down your rules of trading. So you tell yourself, for example, for me, I'll give you a perfect example. I literally look for five trades in a day. As you notice, most of the, every time I give trades, I usually give trades anywhere from five to seven trades. Maybe eight, but usually five to seven. If it's eight, I'm pushing it. Um, because I'm just looking for five good trades that I can take. And then I'm looking for a specific number of pips. So write them down, write it down, okay? Um, ask yourself, okay, so you want me to repeat? Could you repeat that please? Repeat what, Juliet? Um, maybe, okay, so I was talking about when you're trading, okay, I'm hoping this is where I should have repeat, I'm repeating from. Okay, um, okay, so when you're, when, you're, when you're trading and you need to know what kind of a trader you are. So for example, I was explaining myself, I, take, I look for five profitable trades. So usually I'll give maybe six or seven or eight trades, but I have taken or I'm purposing in my mind to take five. Out of those five, I know how many pips I want. So let me give you an example. If you're a scalper and if you're a scalper, you're a scalper, you take 10 to 20 pips, okay? If you take 30, 40, you're not a scalper. That's it. So if you start mixing, there's a problem already and it's going to hurt you long term because you'll never ever be confident as a trader. So if you're taking 10 to 20 pips, that means you're taking 50 to 20 times 5, 100, 20 times 5 is how, many, is how many? 100, 100 pips. So 50 to 100 pips, yeah? As a scalper, that's what you're looking for in a day. So if you, uh, um, um, and that will vary depending on the lot size. And we'll talk about lot size shortly. I'll, I'll do a practical thing on how to calculate profits using your lot size. Um, so follow your rules, write them down and follow them to the T every single day, whatever they are. Then when you make losses, because we will be making some losses here and there, always learn what, what went wrong and move on quickly. Don't get stuck. Like for me, anytime I make, I'll make losses, trust me. I no longer dwell on it. I'm like, okay, I shut my computer. The next day I'm done, I'm back in the market. I don't even think about how much I lost because obviously I've also built the resilience in terms of losses. Um, then always take responsibility for your losses. Even if I give you a trade, please guys, don't go and say, oh, Lilo's trade because you're not taking responsibility for your trade. No one put a gun to your head to take the trade, okay? It is, your, it is your responsibility to, um, 
monitor your trades. It's your responsibility to, all we do is we try and ensure your success by pouring into you and just sharing with you our trade ideas. Don't be a victim. If you're a victim, it's not gonna work. You'll be a victim for a year and a year down the line, you'll still be struggling, okay? Um, and as you know, losses are not, are not only part of the game, but they're also the prize for the next chance. So you have an, another opportunity to literally try again. So in, in summary, if you look at this, it says take profit, aim for at least two to one reward to risk ratio. What does that mean? For the new people, that basically means if I'm targeting a profit of, let's say, um, $100, and this is just a general thing. You can always increase it if you want, but this is a general rule. Two to one basically means your profit is two, your loss is one. So if you're targeting 50 pips, ideally your, your loss should be at 25 pips, 30 pips maximum. Yeah, that is, I mean, I, it, it, this is a bit more stricter, uh, especially for scalpers, you'll find that sometimes you'll be thrown out of the trade. But what I've seen is, um, depending on the currency, and that's why it's also good to begin to understand the currency pairs, like the way Euro USD moves is very different from GBP USD or GBP JPY, and very different from USD JPY, and very different from USD ZAR. So if you know how they move, then you'll be able to, uh, to understand how to target your reward to risk ratio. But as a rule, two to one. And you can always, think, as long as your profits are always more, or you can do one is to one. So yes, 50% of the time, you know, you win. And then if you don't win, you're risking half of, you know, 50%. But two to one is a better average. Then stop loss, we, we encourage you 30 to 40 pips. Um, although when you talk to institutional traders, and this is real, they'll tell you, like I'll give you an example, someone who's managing an account of $20,000, okay? And I'm just talking to you guys in terms of, general you don't have to do this because obviously we are still starting to trade and we have small accounts but usually you'll find institutional traders maybe someone trading twenty thousand dollars they are they are risking eighty dollars like they want to make let's say four hundred dollars but they are risking eighty so their stop loss is at eighty dollars whether that's 40 pips 20 pips it doesn't matter um so if you compare that to what we do traditionally you'll find that we are still as retail traders with small accounts risking exposing our accounts a bit yeah but obviously gradually we'll get there but as a rule for now 30 to 40 pips uh 52 week challenge we are at 30 pips stop loss and then never risk more than one to three percent of your account um and then now we are going to look at uh, how to calculate your profit so what i'm going to do very quickly is and i hope you guys have your pens and papers because you're going to help me with this if there are any questions, you can type in, but if there are none, I'll just move. So if you have, um, let me open my spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm opening the 52 week trading plan. This is how it looks. You know, if you have a hundred dollars here, you can see for anyone who hasn't looked at this, this is how it looks. I know Bernard has gone through this before. Um, so we all have a rough idea of how to apply it when we are trading, okay? Now I'm going to use, this because I was coming up with um, just how to how to give you guys an idea of how to calculate your risk, your profit in terms of real money um, and vis-a-vis -vis your lot size. So I'm actually just referring to my to some notes on the whatever. So okay, so for for example, as a rule, I usually tell people only risk share the spreadsheet okay somebody in the group kindly share the spreadsheet the 52 week spreadsheet um uh, fides doesn't have it so yeah can everyone hear me if you can still hear me because i'm getting a notification internet's uh, unstable if you can hear me less if you can hear me just type in one 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 somebody type in one 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 if you can hear me if you can hear me type in thank you okay awesome so here is our risk, okay? So our risk, you guys can see my screen, I assume, yeah? Let me, let me, actually, you can't see my screen. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm doing it just now. Oh, that's what you meant to be this. Ah, okay, cool, gotcha. Can you see my screen now? Can 
Can you guys see my screen? Okay, perfect. You can see my screen. Okay, cool. Thanks, Fides, for that. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand what you had said earlier. So, uh, as a rule, I tell people, risk 1% to 3%. Right now, with the 52-week, we are doing 2%, you no, know, starting with 0 0.02. Um, but let's do this practically, okay, from $100. So, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear this whole thing because this was another example I was doing for somebody else. Okay, so let's assume, uh, remember the 52 week, we, we know the spreadsheet, uh, we're starting with $100. By the end of the week, we want to be at $115. So let's, let's, let's do this practically. So we all have $100 and then obviously later on, you can practice with $200, with $300 and so on. So we have $100. And the lot that we're using, zero, one to 3% is usually 0.01 to 0 0.03 are we together so that's what i've written here lots 0 0.01 and we know the pip value so for a 0 0.01 lot for the new people especially uh, the value is 10 cents per pip yeah if you're on 0 0.02 the value is 20 cents per pip and if you're on 0 0.03 and so on and so forth we know what the value of, of that is. Uh, I'll try not to believe at that point. Okay, so we are starting with 0 0.01 because that's where majority of us begin. So let's say, and, I'm, and this, is a re, this is a trading plan I'm recommending for you guys. This is something that I discovered works and it will still help you meet your compounding goals at the end of the week, yeah? So I hope you have your calculators because I'll need people to help me with some math. At the end of the day, I, as you guys know, I'm not very good at mathematics. So please uh, just assist me. So assuming you have a $100 account, you're trading at 0 0.01, and you're taking, this is my idea, five trades a day. So out of all the traders, whether it's Bass, myself, whoever, you're taking five trades a day, okay? Now, if you're at 10 pips, yeah, if you want to do 10 pips, yeah, uh, because we know 10 cents per pip is for 0 0.01, right? So if you do 10 pips, the mathematicians in the house, that's about $1 that you'll make. I know most of us know this, right? Uh, um, so what I'll do here, I'll put the dollar amount and then I'll put the number of trades so that we can do the math, sorry, yeah, number, yeah, number of trades, which is, is five trades. Um, okay, let me do this instead. So five trades a day. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do this. This would have been easier if I was doing it on us. Flip chart, but anyway, so this is five trades in a day. So at 10 pips, we make $1, right? On 0 0.01. Now, if we do 20 pips, let me even just do pips up here so that I don't have to keep typing the same thing. So if we do 20 pips, that is basically $2, right? So this is the dollar value. And then if we are doing 30 pips, because I want us to do a 0 0.01 lot to 0 0.03. So up here, ideally, should be 0 0.01, um, so 0 0.01 to 0 0.03, okay? Um, so that's 10 pips, 20 pips, 30 pips. So this is $3, and this is $2. And then we are doing five trades. So multiply by five, so multiply by five, multiply by five, multiply by five. At the end of the day, after five trades, we have how many, uh, how much have we made? Five dollars. 
Here we've made $10 and here we've made $15. Are we together? Is everyone together on this? Right, everyone is, to, we are together, right? Uh, if you're, we are all together on this, especially for the new people, just type, yes, Juliet, perfect, because I know you're new. Okay, so that's on 0 0.01 lot. Okay, please note, this is 0 0.01. So let me just remove this so that I don't confuse you. Now we go to 0 0.02. Yeah, where most of us are starting. So there's a 10 pips, there's a 20 pips, and there's the 30 pips. If I'm wrong anywhere in my math, please let me know. So if you're doing 10, 10 pips on 0 0.02, how much is that in, uh, in dollar? If you, if you make 10 pips, that's like $2. If you're doing 20 pips, that's about $4. And if you're doing 30 pips, that's about, um, I think, $6. Mathematicians, if I'm wrong, just let me know. And then, of course, we have our five trades. We have our five trades. And we have our five trades. Um, so at the end of the day, that's $10. And then that's uh, $20. And that's $30, that's $30 here. Sorry. So depending on your lot size, so 0 0.1, you make either 5 to $15 every single day taking five trades. Now we are going to do this for, because remember guys, I trade three times a week. I know some of you trade all week, which is fine. Uh, but for me, I trade three times a week. So I'm going to put times three days. So these are five trades per day, but I'm only trading for three days in the week. Yeah, so whichever three days, it doesn't have to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It can be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Friday, whatever. But let's say we are trading three days. So if you're trading three days, uh, now I'll need help with the mathematicians. So it's five times three, that's 15, right? Are we, am I right? 10 times three, 30. 15 times three, 45. Are we together, guys? We are together? Perfect. So. Let's go back to our spreadsheet, okay? We've traded for three days, okay, guys, on 0 0.02. So let me just highlight this column because this is where we are, okay? And also highlight this one. We go back to our spreadsheet. So we've made $30 in three days, yeah, of trading, and we are done. If we go to our spreadsheet, we are supposed to make 15%, but clearly we've made 30. So week one, we are technically at $130. So the next whatever will be $130. So that means your next trade will start at 149. So you, you find that you're doing 10 pips, okay? And why I'm saying 10 pips is because I know personally 10 pips is so easy to do compared to 50 or 30 or 100, but 10 pips you can do. Now, my, my, my suggestion would be to do them one at a time, like maybe, um, or two at a time, two maximum trades at a time. So you don't need to take five trades at once. Remember, you have all these educators who are giving you pips throughout the day. So even if I give you five trades, you don't have to take all my five trades because if you take all my five trades, then you, you might find you have over leveraged. You're, be, you're beyond, you can, you, in fact, you can't because you're beyond your 0 0.02, yeah? So either you do 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, but I'll recommend from experience, just stick with one trade at a time. Take your 10 pips, get out. Get into the next trade, take your 10 pips, get out. Like that, like that. So let's go back to the spreadsheet on this because I just want to show you something. So we had 0 0.02. So this becomes uh, five, uh, 20 times five, 10 times five is, five, 10 times three, sorry, is 30, right? So that's $30. 20 times three is $60. And 30 times three is $90. How does that look, guys? At 0 0.02, 
you've made $60 in three trading days in the week. How does that look, guys? How does that sound? So instead of being at 115, you're at 160. Does that make sense? And you're only risking 10 pips. You're not waiting for 100 pips. You're just taking your 10 pips and you're getting out. So that's 0 0.02. Now, something I wanted to show you also. So, and then think about it this way. So week one here, um, you're going to be at 115 if you're doing 10 pips. We, uh, if you're doing 20 pips, you're going to be at 130. If you're doing 30 pips, you're going to be at 145. At 0 0.01. Are we good, guys? So guys who want to maybe say take 30 pips now, you're still at 0 0.01, but get look at your numbers. And you've not over leveraged, but you're still good to go. Now, at 0 0.02, because that's where majority of us are with the 52-week challenge, you're now at 30, uh, what are we multiplying again? Oh, sorry, we are now at um, 130, right? And then we're at 160, and now we're at 190. So you took five trades every single day, and you put 0 0.02 at 10 pips you made 130 you made more than the the anticipated 15 percent of course this won't always work uh, perfectly but the idea is you have a mental picture of how much you want to make at the end of the or how much you can make based off your lot size so you're not just putting a lot size and saying okay um i've entered 0 0.02 i i see five dollars close then I enter again, close. You know, you're not doing that. It's more systematic. Now you're, you're, you're doing it as with a plan. And when you plan, guys, every time you do, you do something with a plan, your success rate is higher. So let's try 0 0.03. Because remember, on the spreadsheet, and I'll go back to the spreadsheet so that I can show you. On the spreadsheet, your numbers are going to significantly increase because now with this strategy of trading three days in the week, for, um, five trades a day at the end of the day um, uh, you can and, and, and anyway even if you don't do let's say three days in the week and you do five five trades in the week so three times five is 50, wait three times five is 15 trades right so literally what we are saying you can you look for 15 trades in the week so 15 divided by five is three so if you're trading through the week you just need three trades every day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you still hit your target. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, guys, type one, one, one. Yeah, it makes sense. Awesome. Um, so let's go to 0 0.03. So at 0 0.03, it's 30 cents per pip. That's the value. So 10 pips will be $3. And I'm just trying to show you the value. Sorry, three dollars. And then, oh, so let me do it here. So let me copy paste this. Control. -C. Okay, so ten pips is three dollars. Okay, twenty pips on zero point zero three is six dollars. Again, the mathematicians just look at my numbers if they're correct. Thirty pips, if we do the math, is nine dollars on 0 0.03. And remember in our spreadsheet, there'll be a point when we'll be able to use 0 0.03 depending on the size of our account. Um, there's a point to this exercise because I want to show you how fast, how, how fast you'll be able to grow your account uh, trading conservatively. So um, if I do the math five days again, so five days, five days, five days, and then, um, so the, basically this will be $15. And then this will be $30. Sorry, no, 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 no. Sorry, because it's five times six times five. Six times five is thirty dollars. I hope we're together and I'm not losing anyone. And then nine times five is forty-five dollars. So ten pips 
five trades, fifteen dollars. Twenty pips with zero point zero three five trades is six times five, thirty dollars. Thirty pips, um, nine dollars per thirty pips. Five trades that's forty five dollars. Now t multiply that by three days in a week. Fifteen times three. Uh, here I'll need some help. I think 15 times 3 is 45. Am I right? 45. Ah, perfect. Ah, yeah. 30 times 3, 60. That one is okay. 45 times 3. Mathematicians is one what? Hey. What's 45 times 3? 30 times 3 is 90. Oh, you see, now I need your help. You, you understand? Yeah, you yeah, are not perfect. I'm a trader, but I don't know math. Anyway, so 45 times 3. Somebody, somebody, because I'm not saying. 135. Is 135. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So that's 135. Right? So, wait, why is it? Um, now, so that, that's, that's, that's basically, so let, let me highlight this, this uh, as well. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. I don't want to go beyond this because I think you guys are getting an idea that you can do 0 0.04, 0 0.05. And at the end of the day, this is one to 3%. So you can, you, at the end of the day, you're still not over leveraged with your $100 account. You're still within the good range. So let's say, um, we started with, we are at $20, we are at $130. We come here. So the first week, um, ideally, you'll be at $171, but you actually will not be at $171 because here you'll have done more pips, as you can see here. Sorry. I hope I don't lose anyone as I'm making this. Uh, Oh yeah, so I, I need to do them. So this is 30 times 10, 45. So can we multiply these other numbers? Uh, 15 times 45, because I want to just look at the number of trades that we need to do. So 15 times 45, someone? In the week, this is the week, this is the, the day. So for the week on 0 0.03, Oh, uh, 15 times 675. How much? 675. 675, you're sure? Lillian. Yeah? I think that column you were putting, what the total will be at the end of the week. Yes, so times three, right? No, no. Times. It's 100 plus $15. Oh, yeah, it's addition, not yeah. multiplication. You're right. Yeah. So you'll be at 145. Thanks for us for that. I hope you guys are together now. So 20 plus 90 is 110. Sorry. 20 plus 90 is? That not would be 190. 190. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 100 plus 135 is 235. Sorry. 35. Yeah. I think the numbers are confusing me. So this is basically what you have at the end of the, of the week. Okay. Trading 0 0.03. So, so this, this guys, if you trade like this, you literally, if you plan this out prior to starting to trade, you literally go with the right mindset into the market because then you know how much money do I want to come out with. A majority of traders, we go into the market hoping for pips, hoping that Lilo will throw a profitable trade. But we don't know how much do I want at the end. What is my target at the end of the day? I hope, I hope that is making some sense. So if you now use this plan and uh, let's say we continue, this is week one, right? This is week one, right? So if you multiply times four, so times four, so times four, um, and the mathematicians now times four, meaning we want to try and figure out how much in the, in the month, so, uh, so 
So let's start with the 0 0.03. So times 4, 235 times 4. Somebody? Thirty-five. Sorry, how much? Nine forty. Nine forty. Yes. Can you guys now believe the way Bernice was able to grow her hundred dollar account to eight hundred dollars? Does it now look realistic? Yes. You kind of understand why she was able to do that, yeah? Yes. So uh, one ninety. Sorry, one ninety times. Uh, man, all these. Can you guys hear me? You disappeared. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just getting pop-ups on my my on my laptop. That's why. Okay. So let's do the math now for the rest, yeah, so that we can conclude this session. So one ninety times four. This is in the month. So what's one ninety times four? Somebody. 760. 760. Who is that confident person over there? I think you're really helping us. Think clear. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the famous yeah. Thomas. <laughs> 145 times 4. Now you can do this faster. 145 times 4. 580. 580. Okay. Then, yeah. yes. Sorry, I just wanted to, to note that this is without compounding. I'm just showing you this without compounding okay yeah without compounding because what i want you guys to what i'm trying to do i'm also working on your psychology i'm trying to make you believe that this is possible that that compounding of 143 is actually viable because sometimes we are there we are trading but we are like hey 143 at the back of our mind somewhere there's a bit of doubt yeah so when you do it this practically you're able to see so 190 times four mathematicians 190 times 4. Somebody? Anybody? 580. 190 times 4. Is how much? 580. It's 580. 760. Hey. No, 760. No, 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 no. Lillian, 760. Okay, let's. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, 760. <laughs> Okay, I was even wondering. 160 times 4? 640. Uh, 130 times 4? 580. So do you see something like... No, uh, it's not 580. It's counting 580. 520. 520. 520. 520. 4 times 3 is 12, so 520, yeah. So that's 520. Okay, now we go to the 0 0.01. So this is where majority of us are over right here, right? So we go to the 0 0.01 times 4. 145 times 4 is 580. 130 times 4 is 520. Eh? Am I right? 520. Yes, 520. And then 115 times 4 is 64. Four sixty. It's for four sixty. So technically, every month you should, on average. Okay, who's that with the dog? Can I mute you? Can I mute you? Can I mute you? Okay, so on average, you can make four hundred and sixty dollars to a maximum of nine hundred and forty dollars monthly. Trading three times a week, four times a month. And trading anywhere between 10 pips per trade to 30 pips per trade with a risk of 1% to 3%. Now, what I like to tell people, this is a perfect scenario. So this is not going to work as perfectly for everybody. So even if, let's say, yeah, let's, let's, let's do 50%. So 50%. In this column so this is a hundred percent it goes well but this 50 percent is is um calculating that you've lost 50 percent of your trades am i right so for 60 divided by 50 by 2 is 230 mm -hmm. yeah 
That's your balance at the end of the month. I have 520 divided divide by two. Somebody is 260. 260. 260. And then this is 290. So worst case, you started with $100. At the end of the month, that's 290. Now let's look at the percentage growth. Can someone calculate the percentage growth from $100 to 230? Let me also. Anybody? Any mathematicians? Yeah. Yes, uh huh. What percentage growth is that? Per month, because this is this is for the month. So from a hundred dollars, you said week one to week four, you're at two hundred and thirty. Isn't it two thirty percent? Yeah, uh, two hundred and thirty percent. The whole number. Guys, let me ask you a question. Is two hundred and thirty percent good money? Of course. Right, the growth so, is actually 130. It's 130, not 130. It's 130. So, you've doubled your account. Yes, yeah. now something you can do is okay. This person with the dog, <laughs> we love your dog, but hey, okay. So, <laughs> so, so, my point is this, guys, this is now 50%. Um, of 460, we have factored in losses. Let's say it's really, really bad. So we even say we have this amount. You'll still be in profit. You'll still have profit at the end of the month, and you'll still be able to. Um, uh, you can even withdraw some money. Let's say you withdraw your initial 100 dollars. Of course, in the 52-week challenge, we are saying you're not withdrawing. So this strategy, basically, or this plan is for your other account. Remember, we have our freedom account and we have our other account. So whatever figures you're seeing here, just put your figure. Okay? So you Hello. put your... Uh -huh. Lily, yes. um, I'm grateful that you're showing the numbers on the screen, but kindly I can't see them. So when you're oh, talking okay. about them, don't say these numbers. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Please. sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so... Uh, basically, what I'm saying is with $100, at the end of the month, you have $230 worst case scenario. And worst case, you've at least grown your account by 15%. I know we are saying we want to grow our accounts uh, on the 52 week by 15 a week. That's fine. We stick to that plan. But remember, we have another account, which now we are going to be withdrawing. Yes. And we are, and because it's the money we are withdrawing, we also want to make sure that we are not losing money. And that's why I'm trying to encourage you guys, take the smaller pips initially, grow your account, let it reach a significant amount, like, you know, like $800, $900, and then begin to take bigger risk. So even if you withdrew $100 from your initial capital in the first category, where your account is at $230, you still have $130 the next month to start trading with. So you're now trading with market money. So if you do the math all the way to down here and you halve all the amounts, you'll find that you're still in profit. You're still making more than ideally you should. Now, um, so that's basically it. So any questions about this? Anything that someone has not understood? No question? You guys are awesome. You're the smartest people. Any question? No question? We are good? OK, if you're uh, no, on. Okay. Well, would... Yes, uh, I'm on. <clears throat> First, allow me to say thank you a lot for your presentation. It's so wonderful, easy to follow. We are not having many people like you are ready to teach us even over the night. We are grateful. Secondly, I uh, request if it's possible for you to 
to kindly share maybe the, the spreadsheet so that maybe someone like me can also go through again the numbers okay. and uh, maybe have it understood clearly. Okay, I'll do, it, I'll, I'll do it by the morning. Sawa, sawa. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no questions, I think then people have understood and we are good. Okay, so let's go. Let's now wrap up um, and continue with the... So let me just share my... Let me share my presentation. Okay, so that's that. Now, the last topic, which will be very, very quick, is on hedging. And this is what I was telling you guys, that if you learn how to hedge, um, you, you'll find that you, you, you never have to blow an account. You really, really don't have to. Because you can, the, the purpose of hedging is to secure your, 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 your account. Um, yes, I will, uh, I hope you can share this video for, okay, yes, I'll be able to, to share the video. So, uh, as you can see, a Forex hedge is a transaction implemented to protect an existing or anticipated position from unwanted moves in the market. So, sometimes you can enter a trade and it just goes the other way. So, there are different types of hedging. Um, I've just listed them here. The important ones are the number one and two, uh, which is the simple Forex hedging. So simple for, and I'll do this practically on my MT4 so that you can see exactly what I mean. So simple Forex hedging basically is whereby I can be in the market and let's say I take a currency, I'm trading a currency pair like Euro USD. Uh, let's say I am in a buy position for Euro USD, right? So if I wanted to, let's say it went in the wrong direction and it went into a sell. So now I am in, maybe it has gone a hundred pips. It doesn't matter what lot size, but it has gone a hundred pips. And maybe my account is over leveraged. I'm panicking. So I would apply a simple Forex hedge uh, protection uh, uh, strategy whereby I enter an opposite trade on Euro USD. So I use the same currency pair, but I enter it in the opposite direction. So literally, uh, for example, um, if I do, um, and I'll show you on my, on, my, on, my, on my phone shortly. If I do like, let's say Euro USD by 0 0.01, literally, if it goes the opposite direction, I enter a sell at 0 0.01 at, of Euro USD of the same pair. So that's the first way of hedging, and it's called simple for, forex hedging. Now we have another one where now you can use multiple currencies. And like I said, don't worry, I'm just giving you the definition. I'll show you uh, practically. Where, whereby, instead of using the same currency, you can enter a different currency or currencies that are correlated. By correlated, I mean either they move in the same direction or they move in the opposite direction. So, for example, um, a pair like GBP USD and Euro USD, they are positively correlated. What does that mean? They tend to move in the same direction. When GBP USD is going up, Euro USD is generally going up, even if maybe at a different space, but literally going in the same direction. So, if I wanted to hedge Euro USD, let's say I was on a sell and the trade went into a buy. I can hedge that trade uh, so that I don't blow my account and enter a GBP USD, but in the opposite direction. So I'll enter a buy. Does that make sense? So I've entered that, I'm in a sell, I'll enter a buy on GBP USD because these are pairs that move the same way. So if I enter a sell, I'll end up going, I'll end up you know, increasing my loss because they'll end up moving in the same direction. Now, if you want to um, hedge with negative correlated pairs, for example, Euro USD and USD CHF, they move differently. They are negatively correlated. So if I'm in a trade for Euro USD, on a, meaning that if Euro USD is going back, usually USD CHF is going down. You can always check your uh, practically tomorrow, but you'll see that's the case. We can even check it now. Um, so if you want to hedge with that, so Euro USD is going on a buy, they are negatively correlated, and I'm going to ask if anyone is understanding what I'm saying. 
what would be the answer for this? If Euro USD is going up on a buy, and I want to hedge that trade because it's now uh, it was on a sell, but it's going up, and I wanted to hedge it with USD CHF, which is negatively correlated. Would I take a buy or a sell? Anyone? Would I take a buy or a sell? Oh, okay, I'm seeing answers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm seeing sell, sell. So I'm going to repeat the question again for those who may not have understood. If I'm in Euro USD and I'm taking, a, I'm on a buy, and okay, no, I was on a sell, and it is going into a buy. Do I enter a sell or a buy? Okay, can someone, I'm going to choose one person. Why are we entering a sell? Um, who can answer? Why are we entering a sell and not a buy? And, and I'll, anyone? Because they're moving in the opposite direction. Okay, think about it this way. They already move in the opposite direction. Yeah. So if you entered a cell, you would find that you're making things worse. And I'm going to show you guys practically so that Nisi uh, Wapoteze, because the silence in the room is loud. <laughs> let me, let me, I'm going to connect my, just a second. Let me connect my phone. I, I want to do it practically because if you see it practically, it's easier for you to remember. There are positive correlated pairs and then there are negative cor correlated pairs. Oh my. A second, guys. Uh, connect my phone. Connect my phone. Connect my phone. Oh, I need to make my myself pause. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to connect my my phone. Thank you. 